Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we'll talk about sugar, syrup, honey, treacle, molasses, whatever it may be, sweetening. I will explain the effect that it has on yeast and the dough that you're trying to ferment. And we will also clear up one big misconception that people have about sugar and yeast. So ask yourself this question, why are you adding sugar to your dough? Is it because you're making a sweet dough, which is fair enough? Or is it because you want to help the yeast? I'm seeing this more often than not. People take some water, they add their yeast, they add the sugar, they mix it all together and they leave it for 10 minutes, thinking that somehow this is going to help. Sugar is hygroscopic, meaning that it absorbs water. And what else is hygroscopic in bread baking? Salt. So both those ingredients compete with the yeast for water. The less water yeast can absorb, the less active it will be. So sugar acts quite similarly to salt, and it will definitely slow down fermentation. So it doesn't matter what your grandma said, or what you read in some housewife's food blog. Sugar hinders fermentation, and you should never use it thinking that it will speed it up. So let's do an experiment so we clearly see what happens. I'm going to make three loaves of bread, one with no sugar, one with 5% sugar, one with 15% sugar. We will treat them all the same way, same temperature, same everything. The only difference will be the amount of sugar that we add. So let's start with the regular dough. And if you are interested in the principles of baking, I have more videos explaining temperature control, how to knead your dough, how fat affects bread dough and when you should add it. And I also have videos explaining every single step of the baking process. So go and check them out after this. All right, let's get on with these breads then. To give all of them a fair chance and the same treatment, I'm not kneading them. First of all, I'm just going to mix the dough together and then knead them one by one. That way I will spend less time between making each dough. So, on the left we have the dough with no sugar, in the middle the one with 5% sugar, and on the right the one with 15% sugar. I'll just quickly shape them up and knead them fully. I will not knead them for a long time because, again, I don't want to spend a lot of time between each dough. So it will only be 3 minute kneading, which is sufficient for this experiment. So while I'm working this dough, let's talk more about sugar and yeast. Like I said earlier, when you add sugar, it robs the yeast of water. But yeast does need sugar to be active. The thing is that it doesn't need your sugar, it makes the sugar. So in very simple terms, yeast breaks down the starch in the flour, creating simple sugars to feed itself. So it will always make enough sugar for itself. But a quick note here, whilst I'm kneading the dough. The first dough felt pretty normal. The middle one, with 5% sugar, more or less the same. But the last one with 15% sugar is a lot stickier. Sugar does act a little bit like a liquefying agent also. So keep that in mind, it will make your dough a bit more sticky. Actually, in my brioche recipe, I suggest adding the sugar later on in the mixing process. For this exact reason. So all three pieces of dough are fully kneaded. I'm going to get these out of the way, clean out this mess. You can see the last dough stuck to my hands. Now we can start fermentation and you will clearly see the difference. And of course they're still in the same order. The one on the left with no sugar, the one in the middle 5%, the one on the right 15%. So sugar will significantly start slowing down fermentation when it gets up to about 10%. But as we will see further down the line, even 5% will slow it down. So if you are making sweet dough, then what you can do is just use more yeast. Or on the other hand, of course, you can just leave it to ferment for longer. So there's different ways to go about it. I'm not hating on sugar. You should definitely use sugar if you need to. Just use it for the right reason. So after checking the temperature, it's more or less the same. There's a 0.3 of a degree difference. The middle dough came out a little bit warmer, but it will not affect it too much. It will still rise more slowly than the dough with no sugar. So I'm going to ferment all of these for the same amount of time. We'll do one hour, then give them a fold, then we'll do another hour, then we'll pre-shape them, then we'll give them 15 minutes, and then we'll do the final shaping, and then do one hour of final proof. This would be the amount of time that I would give a regular loaf of bread. So then let's talk about time. The longer and more slowly the dough will ferment, the more the yeast will break down the starch in it and create more sugars. 
So extreme examples like sourdough bread, which is fermented for 24 hours, 36 hours, or even your regular yeasted overnight loaf, they will accumulate a lot more sugar in the dough. And that's why when you go and bake a bread that has been fermented for a long time, the crust is a lot more caramelized. So that might be one of the reasons why you want to add sugar to your dough. You want the crust to be more brown. And that's fair enough. That's one way to achieve it. Personally, I never add sugar to get a more caramelized crust. If I want my bread to be darker, I just bake it for slightly longer. Now it's been two hours, and from the top down, these look about the same. But when you pick them up and look at them from the side, the right one's clearly a pancake. And it's still sticky. Now I'm gonna pre-shape them and let them rest before the final shaping. So let's talk about other kinds of sweetening. At the beginning of the video, I had white sugar, brown sugar, some treacle and honey. As far as I can tell, all of them have the same kind of effect. They just taste different mainly. So depending on what kind of bread you're making, you may use one or the other. For instance, my rye bread recipe includes a large amount of treacle. That's what gives it that rich dark color. If you are adding sugar to your recipe, then I would always suggest pouring it into the water or into the liquid that we are using for your dough, and then stirring it until it dissolves. It is a lot easier to dissolve the sugar in the liquid than try to work it into the dough. Okay, so we've done the final shaping. Now we're ready for the final proof here. And again, looking down from the top, these look quite similar. But now you can clearly see the difference as they're puffing up. It has been the final hour of fermentation and clearly the dough with no sugar in it has puffed up the most. The one in the middle, slightly less volume, and the one on the right, still a pancake. So I'm not going to do anything special here, I'm just going to slash them and then pop them in the oven. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, if you want to add your sugar, just leave your dough for longer, it will puff up eventually. This was just to show the effect of sugar on the dough. So our three loaves have been fully baked, and obviously only one of them was fully fermented. The other two are clearly underproved. So that's it, the experiment's over, simple as that. So in conclusion, Think about why you're adding sugar, add it for the right reasons. Sugar should be added to either darken the crust, as you can see, that has clearly happened here, or it should be added to sweeten the dough. To counteract the effect of sugar, you should either leave your dough to ferment for longer, make it slightly warmer, or use more yeast. If you are using sugar, the dough might get a bit more sticky and harder to work with, keep that in mind, and the yeast makes its own food. It doesn't need your help. So just let it do its thing and always ask yourself, why are we using the ingredients that we use and what do they do to the dough? And if you have that curiosity and you want to learn more, check out my steps of baking playlist and my principles of baking playlist. It's a lot more valuable to know the how and why instead of just knowing a recipe. You shouldn't just do things because someone told you to. Check the facts and find out for yourself. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.